Good morning. Yesterday we celebrated International Nurses Day and appreciated the kindness that they display daily in their work. And then I read a book called Humankind, A Hopeful History by Rutger Bregman, pub published by Bloomsbury. Uh, this review that I read uh, described it as an extraordinary uplifting story of human capacity for kindness. Uh, sorry, an uplifting history of the human capacity for kindness. It contests the idea that we are innately self-seeking and chiefly driven by egotistical goals. Bregman, who's a Dutchman, offers a very different optimistic interpretation of the last 200,000 years of human history saying that humankind shows how the recognition of kindness and altruism around us and within us can help us achieve real positive change. So Bregman, who's from Holland, uh, remembers a Dutch psychology professor telling him about an experiment that he would do regularly with his uh, pupils. He, he would ask his students this, Imagine an aeroplane makes an emergency landing and breaks into three parts. As the cabin fills with smoke, everybody inside realises we've got to get out of here. What happens? Well, he imagines two different planets, planet A and planet B, where this happens. On planet A, the passengers turn to their neighbour neighbours to ask if they're all right. Those needing assistance are helped out of the plane first. People are willing to give their lives, even for perfect strangers. Planet A. Planet B. Everybody is left to fend for themselves. Panic breaks out. There's a lot of pushing and shoving. Children, the elderly and people with disabilities get trampled underfoot. Now the question. Which planet do we live on? What do you think? The professor whose class he, he asked this question said that he reckons most people, 97% of people, think that we live on planet B. But the truth is, in almost every case, we live on planet A, where people help each other. I wonder if you remember back as I do, to the 1958 Munich air disaster when the Manchester United team trying to take off um, crashed and uh, Matt Busby, Bobby Charlton and other people were there. Well, in that crash, Harry Gregg, the goalie, um, was knocked unconscious by the crash, but when he woke up with blood all over his face thinking he was dead, he realised that... Um, his other friends on the flight needed to be helped to get out because the aircraft was catching fire. So he helped them escape. And I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you've seen the film Titanic, but um, you probably think if you watch the film that everybody was blinded by panic except the string quartet. Uh, but in fact, in real life, the education, the evacuation was really quite orderly. One eyewitness recalls that there was no indication of panic or hysteria, no cries of fear and no running to and fro. Or if you remember back to the September 11th, uh, 2001 terrorist attacks, 9-11, thousands of people in the Twin Towers, as they, as they burned, descended the stairs of the building calmly, even though they knew that their lives were in danger. They stepped aside for firefighters and the injured. And people would actually say, no, no, you, you first. And one survivor later reported, I couldn't believe it, that at this point people would actually say, no, no, please take my place. It was uncanny. Or remember the 7th of July 2005 London tube and bus bombings. People helped each other in those terrible situations rather than... Um, rather than leaving people to their fate. And Rutger 
uh, Bregman says, I don't, know if, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right in Dutch, there's a persistent myth that by their very nature, humans are selfish, aggressive and quick to panic. It's uh, some psychologists call this the veneer theory, that civilization is nothing more than a thin veneer that will crack at the slightest provocation. In fact, Bregman uh, uh, argues, the opposite is the true truth. When crisis, when a crisis hits, when the bombs fall or the flood waters rise, humans become our best selves. And Bregman, Bregman says that now in the middle of this pandemic, it's crucial to remember this because throughout our media, we're often flooded by cynical stories and negative comments. Uh, and it's in moments like this, it's tempting to conclude that most people are selfish and uh, egotistical. But he argues for every selfish and egotistical person out there or out here, um, there are thousands of doctors, cleaners, nurses, transport workers, etc., working round the clock on our behalf. And for every panic-driven hoarder of uh, thousands of uh, toilet rolls, there are 10,000 people doing their best to prevent the virus from spreading further and being considerate to others. We've got to acknowledge, of course, because we are human, that greed and other sins does motivate some of us some of the time. But thank God, it's not the whole truth about all of us. Jesus said in John 15 verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends, like the nurses and carers today and many others. And our prayer for the day. Circle us, Lord. Keep comfort near, keep discouragement afar. Keep peace within and keep turmoil out. Circle us, Lord. Keep protection near and danger afar. Circle us, Lord. Keep hope within, keep despair without. Circle us, Lord. Keep light near and darkness afar. Circle us, Lord. Keep peace within and anxiety without. Eternal Father, Son and Holy Spirit, shield us on every side. Amen. That's a prayer from the uh, Celtic daily prayer from the Northumbria community.